Hey guys, uh, in Gateway to Technology today, we are talking about the design brief, design squad videos. We are going to learn a little bit uh, about the design process. For those of you who had my class last year, this will be a review. Um, we did just finish our STEM project, and with that STEM project, um, we were looking at products that um, engineers use. So when the engineers create products, they use the design process. The design process is a planning process that leads to products and systems in our world. There's no perfect design. That's why we keep having improvements and um, you know things that are in changing all the time. Requirements of a design are usually criteria and constraints. Those are um, your limitations and your expectations. So criteria basically tells you what you want the elements of your design to feature. What products do you want included in your, um, pro in your product? So what purpose, what function do you want to have? So some criteria could be if I am making, say, a container for a beverage. I want it to fit in my hand. I want it to be comfortable. I don't want it to be too heavy. Um, those are some criteria. Some constraints would be that it, it can't cost me more than this much money to make it. Um, it needs to be no bigger than this or no smaller than this. It needs to weigh this much. Those are constraints. Those are limitations. So the design process is a purposeful method of planning a solution to a problem. Okay, we are going to be doing this in this class. Okay, we're going to use the design process. It's never final. There's always multiple solutions to a problem. In any class you take of mine, I am going to talk about there's more than one way to solve a problem. And that is true of almost everything. The design process is influenced by the requirements that are criteria and constraints. Those are very important to keep in mind. Okay, this is the design process. It is circular and it kind of goes all over the place a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is you have to define the problem. What is it that you're trying to fix, okay? Depending on uh, what your situation is or your current situation, you're going to define the problem. What is it? Then you have to brainstorm. How are you going to solve this problem? How are you gonna fix it? What kind of things can you do? Then you're gonna have to do some research. And with that research, you're going to generate some ideas and you're going to go, OK, well, we can do this or we can do that and maybe um, write those down. With that generating some ideas, you're going to go ahead and then start developing those ideas. So you're going to explore more possibilities. You're going to think about those criteria and constraints and see what what of those possibilities would actually work. Once you get to that point, then you're going to choose the best idea. The best idea is the one that's going to actually meet the criteria and constraints, and it's actually going to be able to be constructed, and you can select an approach. How are you going to go about tackling this problem? Then you're going to make a model or a prototype, test and evaluate, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then you're going to improve it, refine it, create it again, make it again, go back to the drawing board if you need to. Once all that's done, then you're going to communicate your results either to your client or to your teacher, depending on the project. So when you define the problem, uh, you're just examining the evidence, figuring out what it is that you need to um, design, what it is the problem is. Then you're brainstorming with typically with multiple people and coming up with some different ideas. Researching could be anywhere from asking questions to doing a Google internet search, um, things like that. Developing your ideas. Lots of people are going to have different ideas, and that's a good thing. You want people to bring their own ideas to the table. Uh, maybe you can combine a few of those ideas together. How is it going to actually work? Okay, What constraints and did you use and did you meet? Okay, then after all of that, you're going to choose the best idea. Typically, there's a decision matrix. This is when you would have your decision matrix um, in play here. And then you're going to go ahead and make your model, your prototype. Could be a realistic drawing, almost always is. Then you're going to do a mock up or a scale model, or you could also make a working model, which is um, just the 
regular size version that you can actually test and play with. Testing and evaluate, you're actually going to use it, see if it works. Um, see, does it meet the criteria? Do you need to change, make any changes to it? And then make some changes if you need that. Most of the time you will. And at the end, you're going to share your results basically um, with a presentation of some sort. Okay. So in this first video, we're going to watch this video and then we're going to go through um, the worksheet to see what it is we saw during that particular video. Okay, so what is the problem? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to watch this video. Um, we're going to describe what the problem or the challenge is that they were addressing and um, list the criteria and constraints. Okay, so that is um, the blocker. Now let's talk about the worksheet. Okay, so 
They wanted to change the lockers so that it's easier to access rather than using the locker combination. Then they built a prototype so that because they couldn't use an actual locker. They had a few days to do the code and they built it. That, that would be the time constraints. Um, other than that, I didn't really hear a whole lot about your their constraints. Um, when they brainstormed, we're going to say that they came up with different ways to make a locker system more efficient using technology. Um, they wanted to use a handheld scanner. But they ended up using a regular one. Um, they did some research. They had to teach themselves how to do the Python coding. They had to learn how to do the Raspberry Pi. They had to learn how to, to work the motors and to connect and the connections. Okay, so they had to do quite a bit of research on that. And then they wanted to use a portable scanner, but the handheld one was available, so they used that instead. They chose their best ideas. So their best idea was the barcode scanner, the Raspberry Pi, and the motor system. They built an actual locker with the barcode handheld scanner attached to it, to I.O. pens, and then the motor and the Raspberry Pi to the computer. Okay. Then they used an actual barcode to open the locker. The motor wouldn't shut off, so they had to rework it. So they did evaluate that, and then they had to go back and improve it by rewriting the code to make it work. Um, they used some different things to fix the problem. And then they presented to us and probably their teacher with the video. So that is an example of um, they had a problem and they walked through the design process um, to solve that problem and they came to a result at the end, a solution, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch another video. And not only are we going to talk about their um, design process, we're going to talk a little bit about the design brief. So the design brief is basically um, a note system as to who your client is and what it is they want. So this is what engineers use to um, walk through and do some paperwork when it comes to their process, okay? So the design brief, that's what we're gonna work on this time. And when you're gonna be doing both of them during um, our projects. So the client basically is the person, company, organization that requires the talents of an engineer to design a solution. And the target consumer are the people or animals who will use that design. The designer would be the person who is actually making the design solution. Okay, it would be the engineer or you, for example. The statement is the um, challenge statement that describes what you're going to build. So what the stakeholder is asking for and how are you going to solve that problem? What are you going to create? The problem statement is hopefully clear and concise. Sometimes it's not. It's a description of what the problem is and how the client wants you to fix it. Criteria we talked about is the list of needs uh, design requirements to describe what the design solution must do to meet the needs. And the constraints are the specifications and the requirements that define the parameters or the boundaries, limitations, okay, budget, code, safety, physical attributes, that sort of thing. The deliverables is any final thing that you're going to actually turn in. So typically your deliverables would be your um, working prototype. So now we're going to watch the second video and answer the questions.
So that is another design challenge that they had. Um, so their problem was they had to create an outdoor chicken feeder for the chickens. I want to say that it had to have some type of a regulator in there, um, but they didn't say specifically or we missed it, perhaps. Um, so what did we do? All right. So the client was going to be Sue and her family. The target consumer will be the chickens. They have two teams. The green team would be Peter, Kira, and Bianca. And the orange team was Nathan, Caleb, and Daisy. Um, the problem is they need an outdoor chicken feeder with a uh, food regulator. Okay. So what did they design? Okay, so the two teams designed. The Half Moon Rising team made a feeder with two cups and opened when you twisted the cups to pour out the feed into the pan. And the Chicken Bay Stro made a larger container for feed, but then had a regulator that dispensed the feed into the tray. Um, so the criteria constraints are they had to use only recycled plastic materials, and then the feed um, had to be regulated. So it couldn't just slide out and feed the ch chickens. And then the deliverables would be the chicken feeders um, were presented through a presentation to the client. So they delivered um, basically two working models. Okay, so now um, this part is kind of uh, an in your head question. So again, you don't have to answer using my question, my answers, but you can um, please add to them. So what do you think each group did that worked well and what didn't work well? I like that they talked to each other and that they sketched and they had a plan before they grabbed any products. Um, I do think they used the design process effectively for the most part. Um, I do think they probably could have asked more questions during the research phase. So it sounded like the family wanted... Um, to not have to go outside to regulate the feed. It sounded like they wanted it to be done automatically, but I don't believe they, didn't sound like they said that to anybody. So I would have asked those questions. Um, and then which team do you think did a better job communicating with each other? With each other? Um, I think the orange team did a good job. Uh, Daisy seemed a little bit bossy, but they did seem to listen to each other and help each other out. No one got really upset with anyone else. So that's basically um, the design process and the design brief. These are um, processes that we will use on a regular basis. I'm not necessarily going to point them out to you, but we are going to practice them in class. So hopefully um, you get the hang of it. If you need more ideas, you can go to PBIS Kids um, Design Squad videos and have a look at as many as you'd like. Okay, thanks.